Hello there and welcome to Complete Games. I'm James and this is the Aberration Note Read Through. In the previous episode we began the diaries and accounts of Sir Edmund Rockwell across the Aberration map. Rockwell is a survivor we followed from the island across all the maps and he plays a significant role in the whole story of Ark and today we finish his final notes. So once again I invite you to sit back, relax and enjoy part two of the notes from Sir Edmund Rockwell on Aberration. I cannot say that I enjoy wearing this bulky, inelegant suit, but Diana claims its protection is necessary if we are to venture into the Edmonium Caves, so I shall endure it as best I can. I suppose that means I shall have to find a way to think without stroking my beard. Regardless, I'm glad to be off. The other scientists that accompany me are rather nervous about the whole affair, citing monster attacks that plagued previous expeditions. Lily-livered, the lot of them. Science is full of risks. And this is but one more, one that shall prove well worth it in the end. I have travelled the world and created countless scientific marvels, but never before have I seen a sight so beautiful. In its rawest form, the Song of the Edmonium is even more enchanting. Had I the time, I would simply gaze at it for days. Sadly, I must make haste, before the others realise what I already know, that within Edmonium, is the potential for a new dawn of humanity. I can see it. I can feel it. I must be the one to unlock its secrets. Our fates are entwined. This majestic metal and I. More data, Rockwell. You need more data. You are so very close. I've done it. They didn't think I could contain it, but once again I've proven them a band of fools. At last, I've obtained samples of molten edmonium in its raw, unadulterated form. I must be judicious with it. I could only create two containment pods for collecting samples. I may not be able to convince the council to let me return to these caverns to gather a second batch. This will have to be enough. No matter. I've been making miracles with primitive supplies and dim-witted assistance for years. Any sample size at all is enough for Sir Edmund Rockwell. Now that I have returned to the village's laboratory, I have confirmed that raw, molten Edmonium is far more potent than its solid, impure counterpart. Of course, I'm the only one that sees it. The close-minded lackwits here that dare to call themselves scientists refuse to get close to it. They claim it will make me sick. Rubbish. Edmonium would never harm me. I can feel its warmth. I can hear it calling to me. It speaks not of danger, but of infinite potential. They're all so painfully myopic. Their impure Edmonium may make fine armour, but that's a mere fraction of its true power. They will see soon enough. The villagers have been quite bothersome since I've returned. It was interfering with my work. Diana kept checking in on me, claiming she was concerned, but I saw through her lies. I see through them all. They simply want to benefit from my genius. Luckily, I was able to distract them with a side project of mine what I call Plant Species Z. I was studying the effects of charge on various flora and stumbled upon a new species that can act as a bioluminescent sanctuary. They seemed to believe this was the centre of my research, so I happily let my samples pass into their incompetent hands. It's a paltry sum to pay for much needed peace and quiet. Now it's just me and my Edmonium, as it should be. I no longer need to worry about working with a limited sample size, thanks to my genius. This solution was right in front of me the whole time. I merely needed to transform the villagers' supply of solid edmonium into its liquid state, then rid it of its impurities. It was easier said than done, of course, but I am Sir Edmund Rockwell. No problem is too complex and no task too great for me. Nothing can keep me from my goal. Nothing can keep me from ascending. That is the true power of edmonium. I see it now. It can take a living thing and change it. No, elevate it. Yes, yes, but I shall need to test it. Subjects, subjects, I shall need subjects. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. The test went more splendidly than I could have imagined. I used one of the small glowing creatures that the villagers keep as pets for my first subject. It was a timid, fragile thing. That's until I injected it with a full dose of pure molten edmonium into its veins. Then, as I predicted, it ascended. Within minutes it grew in size and power, until at last it was a mighty fearsome beast. Alas, 
That meddler Diana put it down before I could study it more closely. Bah, that was no mercy. That was as close as that worthless creature would ever get to tasting godhood. And she ripped it away. She is the murderer, not I. One day, she shall be punished for it. They dare to lecture me? Imbeciles. They claim to be from the future, but they fear progress. I performed a miracle of science and their reaction is to scold me like a child. Damn them. Damn them all. They'll never let me have another subject at this rate. How am I to continue my experiments without subjects? They may let their petty morality hold them back, but I won't let it bind me. Not when I'm this close. I know with certainty now that Admonium can unlock a species potential. I have to perfect the process. Even without subjects, I must find a way. I must. I may not be allowed to collect more test subjects, but I'm not without resources. Rather than use living creatures, I have taken my experiments one step further. I began testing the effects of Edmonium fusion on human blood. My blood. Thus far, the results are promising. Yes, this is the proper way to do it. Injecting the Edmonium into that creature was too crude. If I first fuse the Edmonium with the subject's blood, and then injecting the resulting concoction... Yes, that's it. I have it. The Edmonium knows it too. It hums its approval as I work. It knows that soon, we shall be as one. Soon, I too shall ascend. Such power, such beauty, I can feel it within me. Growing stronger by the second, never have I felt so alive. It was a risk, of course. My process is not yet perfected, but by cutting off the circulation to my left arm, I was able to contain my metamorphosis within it. Now I can study the results before I undergo my final ascension into godhood. I must hurry. Hurry. I cannot hide my arm from these lesser creatures for long. Nor can I resist its allure. It's taken all my discipline to not simply ascend right now. Yes. Why don't I? I should do it. I deserve it. I... No. Patience. Patience. You've waited so very long. Just wait a little longer. I've gathered as much head money as I dare. The villagers are distracted with their inane celebrations, so thus far I have moved undetected. Imbeciles. What cause could they have for such joy? I've heard mention of Miss Walker, but whatever she's accomplished, it's nothing compared to what I've done. Nothing. She is nothing. I am the true scientist here, the true genius, and soon I shall prove it. Yes, well done, Rockwell, well done. The Edmonium will be more than enough. With it you shall claim what is rightfully yours, at last, at long last. The last preparations have been made. When I set down this pen and begin my final experiment, I shall finally achieve my ultimate goal. I shall at last look down upon the bumblings of mortal men from high above on an Edmonium throne. I, Sir Edmund Rockwell, shall become a god. So on this day, let the earth and heaven tremble. Let the rivers of this blessed metal sing a song of triumph that echoes forever throughout the depths of these caverns. Let the unworthy drown in despair, for a great doom approaches them, and it shall swallow them whole alongside anyone who dared to mock my name. On this day, on this glorious day, I ascend. Primitive savage. How dare you? You are nothing. I am God. How dare you? Hate you. Hate you. I hate you. Where have you banished me? What is this place? What is this feeling? Yes, everything. The earth and sky. Every stone, every crevice. I feel it all. What is this place? What am I? I'm beginning to understand. It was hard to comprehend, for my eyes are still newly open. I did not used to see as I see now, nor did I speak as I speak now. When I speak, it is not to man, they are lesser beings. When I speak, I speak to this place, speak to the Ark, and it speaks back to me. It tells me secrets, things I could have never understood as I was before. It whispers to me of something greater, a plane ever higher than the one I walk on now. We can reach it. We 
two of us. The Ark and I together. And that concludes the note read through for Sir Edmund Rockwell on Aberration. I do of course have the graduate student notes to cover before we can truly complete all of the Aberration notes. So as always we finish what we started and I will be bringing them at a later date in January. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and you're enjoying the art content from myself. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see you.